Good Friday, everyone. This is Pastor Daniel McKee. It is so good to see you. I'm so glad that you tuned in. We are going to start a brand new series called The Secret to a Foolproof Life. What if I told you that I have a secret that you could live a life that would be foolproof? Well, here's the deal. It's not a secret. It's the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs was written in 700 BC. The secret to a foolproof life has been around for a long, long time time. And I think this season, particularly right now in the next couple of we- a couple of weeks, we need to look at the book of Proverbs and get some wisdom. How many would like some more wisdom in their life? I'm sure that is you tonight. Now, I was driving down uh, the road the other day and I saw this sign. It said, palm reading by phone. Palm reading by phone. That's pretty interesting. How does that kind of work out? You call the person up on the phone, they're like, can't see your palm. How are they gonna read your palm on the other side of a phone? I guess they could use the camera. But I was thinking to myself, wisdom. I mean, I mean, we need to pursue wisdom. In my personal opinion, I don't think you're gonna get much wisdom from palm reading on a phone. So I wanna to talk to you about the secret to a foolproof life, and I wanna look at Proverbs. But this week, what I wanna do is kinda of give you some context to Proverbs. What is a proverb? It's to be like, to be compared with. A proverb is a statement that makes a comparison or summarizes a common experience. One of the benefits about proverbs is they use comparison and contrast. It is one of the easiest ways to learn is when you can see, hey, this is how we're supposed to act, and this is what happens, and this is how you're not supposed to act, and that this is what happens. And so proverbs uses compare and contrast brilliantly. The author of Proverbs primarily is King Solomon, and we know that King Solomon was the wisest person on the planet at that time. And so scholars said that he wrote over 3,000 Proverbs in his lifetime. So Proverbs is basically made up of King Solomon's insight and wisdom being the wisest man on the planet at the time. Now, there are some other authors as well. Let me give you the fivefold purposes of Proverbs, and then we're going to dive in with the two things I want to talk to you about this evening. Here's the fivefold purposes of Proverbs. First one is this, for attaining wisdom and discipline. For attaining wisdom and discipline. Number two, understanding words of insight. Number three, acquiring the skills for a disciplined and simple life. Number four, to offer wise counsel for the naive and untaught. The Proverbs would call that person a simple person. A simple person is someone that is just naive or untaught. And and Proverbs offers wise counsel to those individuals. And finally, to help understand Proverbs parables and riddles. So that's kind of like the backdrop of Proverbs. So Proverbs has been around for uh, over 2,000 years, 2,720 years. What is amazing about the book of Proverbs is that you can see how you have insight and wisdom from 2,720 years ago that is applicable to your life today, that you can apply it to your life today. The book of Proverbs is the secret to a foolproof life. And man, over these next few weeks, you're going to learn insight and wisdom on how to navigate through this season. I want to start off by the most, the two most important Proverbs in all of the book of Proverbs. Here they are. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll dive down a little more on these two Proverbs. First one is this Proverbs 1, 7 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And the second one is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs 9, 10. You see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The most important thing that you can discern and understand before you even read one proverb is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear the Lord, then you're not going to receive his wisdom. Then one of the most important things that you and I can do as believers in Jesus Christ is we need to align ourselves with the person of Jesus. We need to fear him. That word fear in the scriptures doesn't mean that we're afraid of God. It means that we have reverence reverence towards God. You can't uh, attain spiritual wisdom without 
proper alignment in your relationship with God. And so when we look at the book of Proverbs, I want you to look at each proverb from the position of fearing the Lord. You see, when you reverence God, when you are are eager to do what he has called you to do, when you are humble before King Jesus, when you have positioned your heart in a place to receive direction from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, you have opened yourself up to wisdom. Wisdom is attracted to, wisdom is is given to the believer that is humble before Jesus. And, And before you read one proverb, before you enter into this series on the secret to a foolproof life, you and I need to center ourselves under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, and then we will receive more than enough wisdom to navigate this uncertain time. I suggest to you, uh, my beloved, that in these next few weeks that you and I need to dive in the book of Proverbs because we are living in an emotionally charged uh, 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 time in, in our world, and we need to respond in a biblical fashion. And I think the book of Proverbs will give us that wisdom to do such. Oswell Chambers says this statement, and I love it. He said, the remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you don't fear God, you fear everything else. Man, that's good. The remarkable thing about God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else else. Fear of the Lord is essential in understanding and gaining wisdom. The fear of the Lord occurs 15 times. That statement is said 15 times in the book of Proverbs. So if the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, then we need to pursue wisdom. I want to talk to you a little bit about wisdom, and then we'll end with some benefits of wisdom and and proceed from there. Let me describe to you what godly wisdom is. Godly wisdom is the is is one who is both knowledgeable and experienced in following God's way. Godly wisdom is one who is both knowledgeable and experienced in following the ways of God. And wisdom is valuable. Man, wisdom is valuable. And we should seek after wisdom. Like we should pursue wisdom. I want to read uh, to you in uh, Pro- uh, Proverbs chapter 2, 1 through 6. But before I read this proverb to you, I want you to pay attention to some key words. I want, As I read these, this proverb, I want you to pay attention to the command, if you, if you, and the action verbs, accept, store up, turning, call, cry, search. So I want you to pay attention to the command and the action verb as I read Proverbs chapter 2, 1 through 6. Are you ready? It says this, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry out for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then, listen to me, if you do this, then, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom, from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. The the author of Proverbs here, King Solomon, is saying, if you do this, then you will receive this. If you do this, then you'll receive this. You see, we have to pursue wisdom. We ha- there's a two-part harmony in our acquisition, our, 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 in acquiring wisdom. First is that we need to fear God. We, need to, uh, rev- we had to have reverence for King Jesus. And then we need to pursue wisdom. We need to seek it out. Wisdom is a gift from God, but it is received when we pursue it. I think it's much like faith, isn't it? Faith without works is dead. I would say this, wisdom that is not sought after is useless. We have to pursue wisdom. And James 1, 5 through 6 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the sea. 
We need to pause, take some time, center ourselves under the lordship of Jesus, and then begin to pursue wisdom in this time. I want to finish with 10 benefits of wisdom. And over the next few weeks, I haven't kind of, I haven't nailed it down, but over the next few weeks, I'm going to zero in on one of these benefits uh, of wisdom and we'll go, we'll dive deep. So here, I want to give you some benefits of wisdom so that during this season, during these next few weeks, I want you to, I want to inspire you to pursue wisdom because wisdom can give you things in your life that are, that, that you're not experiencing at the moment. Wisdom brings happiness, Proverbs 3.18. A person who pursues wisdom avoids the wrong kind of people, Proverbs 2.20-22. Uh, wisdom keeps us from the evil and contributes to holiness. Proverbs 2, 7 through 10. Wisdom protects you. Proverbs 2, 12. Wisdom will lead you to longevity and prosperity. There's a bunch of Proverbs. Proverbs 3, Proverbs 4, 10, 14, and 15. Uh, uh, wisdom helps build relationships with others. Wisdom produces health. Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. Wisdom helps preserve us from poverty. Proverbs 6, 1 through 11. Wisdom helps preserve us from dissension. Proverbs 6, 12 through 19. Wisdom helps us preserve us from trouble. There are so many benefits to wisdom. Now listen to me. Wisdom is not going to hit the front page. Wisdom is not something that is going to get you more followers on Instagram or Twitter. But wisdom will, will lead you to a prosperity, to, to a healthy life. And wisdom is so needed in our world today. And so those are the benefits of wisdom. And we'll pick one of those next week and we'll dive deep on it. Uh, I want to finish with these couple uh, things for you to discuss. First one is this. How often do you read the book of Proverbs? Is it, a, is it a, a, a something that is a daily occurrence in your life? How do you think the book of Proverbs could help you live a foolproof life? What does fearing the Lord mean to you? Do you actively pursue wisdom? Why or why not? And which benefit of wisdom do you notice the most in your life? It's been such a pleasure to talk to you. I'm so excited about this, this series, A Secret to a Foolproof Life. Um, uh, tune in next week um, as we dive deeper into the book of Proverbs. Uh, have a great week. It's so great to see you and talk to you. Peace out.